What you got, young boy? Hey! Woo! Job done. We got the dub. Semi-final win, done. It was actually a dog fight. Way more taxing on our bodies and minds than we were hoping, because now we, we have a turnaround. We play championship tomorrow, so yeah, it just was good that we won. I think I played decent, played solid, nothing crazy. I mean, my man AB went nuts, had 36. So he's gonna make sure, like we gotta make sure he gets some rest. That's kind of the focus of tonight. It's like get as much recovery, good food, ice bath, potentially sauna for contrast. It's, heat is not great for recovery the night after because you gotta drink a lot of fluids. We will see who we play in this next round. The game's going on right now. It's Immortal or uh, Benfica's big rival, Porto. Yeah, exciting stuff. Step one, done. I mean, now we just gotta win this game tomorrow and then you know, hoist that trophy. Yeah, I'm gonna recover tonight, get some rest, do all that stuff, and then I'll catch up with you guys probably tomorrow morning. Another game day. We're watching the game. We got the birthday boy in the bathtub. Hey, you see me? <laughs> we, we, got, we got the veteran doing some crazy kicky. We got, we got Big Ben on the Normatex. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little clout then. We got Diogo. You got some drawers. Oh, no. Woo! Tyler, what's the temperature at? 13. 13? You checked? No, you're lying. Between 13 and 12. We're good, we're good. Chili, chili, chili. Just got done with dinner, got the scout, study that and go to bed. I'll catch up with y'all tomorrow. Hey! <laughs> Championship Sunday, baby. <laughs> All right, it's Championship Sunday, Cup Championship Sunday. You see, we're wearing red, Sunday Reds, in honor of Tiger Woods, not nah, Benfica Red. This is a huge game. We play our rivals, Porto. But let me break down this rivalry. In Portugal, there's really two rivalries. You have the inner city rivalry, Benfica versus Sporting. Both clubs in Lisbon, both big histories. Then there's the regional rivalry, the North versus South, Porto versus Benfica, Porto versus Lisbon. Some people would say this is bigger. Not some people, it is a bigger rivalry. So this is a big one for us. You got the, the blue versus the red. It's this whole thing. It's like a big, feels like a civil war, right? So it's a big one today. And I feel good. I feel prepared. I feel ready. I feel like, yeah, everything we've prepared up to this point is going to lead to this moment. And we're going to be our best versions of ourselves in this moment. And I think I speak for myself, but also the team. We're ready. Today, I'm not going to show the pregame routine. I'm just going to fully be present in this moment. And so let's go straight to this championship game. Let's see how it goes. Championship Sunday, the moment we've been waiting for, the moment we've been working towards. The energy in the gym was electric. You could feel the bad blood between the two teams. It was time to write another chapter in this rivalry and you know me I was itching to make my mark you could tell from the jump we were in for one hell of a game and let me tell you this one did not disappoint let's break down what happened the controversies the questionable calls and all the drama that unfolded in this championship Sunday game 
There's muita gente nas bancadas que é ótimo de ver aqui numa final. Completely unexplainable. We started this game the worst way possible. We looked flat, tired, and we just weren't trusting each other. This play that right here is a good example of how bad we were getting our asses kicked. I personally didn't check in till late into the first, and I didn't make an impact either. This was the first real play that I was involved in, and it's a good representation of how our team was. See here, end of the first quarter, I have this switch, and I never really attack. I look dull, not sharp or dynamic. I go away from the contact and throw up a horrible shot. The absolute worst way to start a championship game, completely unacceptable. At this point, we have to take ownership. This is a championship game. There's no need for extra motivation. Porto has all the momentum, and we're going to our bench looking at each other like, we got to figure this out. I get the nod for the first play call of the second quarter. My timing on the skip hesitation is perfect. Right when the big man retreats back to his man, I attack, and I get the AM1. All week in my extra work, I focus on giving myself more options when attacking left. Right away it pays off and immediately I can feel I'm already in a rhythm. I knock down the free throw hoping this and one will ignite myself and the team. This next play I close out maybe a bit too aggressive but I funnel the man straight to TC. He makes a nice play on the ball. I'm able to get the rebound and we're out. In this fast break, I see numbers, I attack to my strong hand, lay it up, that's a 5-0 run, Porto calls a timeout, I'm feeling we're getting a little bit of momentum. When starting this bad and this emotional of a game, it's all about making consistent, simple plays that slowly start to swing the momentum back in your direction, chip away. Now straight out of the timeout, we give up an easy penetration. I have to rotate onto the big man, and this was scary. This very quickly turned from basketball to WWE, and this felt like I got suplexed. I'm not sure what there is to be mad about right here, because I was genuinely just trying to save myself from dying. I guess my right arm does kind of hang on his neck, but as you can see, it was really unintentional. I wasn't trying to hurt nobody, but they had to check it on the monitor, and thankfully they deemed it a normal foul. My neck hurts, his neck hurts. This is just championship intense basketball it was at this moment he knew he fucked up but yeah no matter what angle they showed this play it didn't look good but let's get back to the game for most of this game Porto was playing with two point guards so if I'm playing the two I knew that I'd have a size advantage and so I get into the post and I go straight to work to shoot over the smaller defender if you are a quote-unquote big guard you need to be comfortable in the post making plays for yourself and the team Next time down in transition, you can't see it, but TC swings the angle of the drag screen to make it a step up. This gives me the whole middle of the court to reject. I get to a nice wide finish here, which makes this a goaltend. Otherwise, he would have blocked me off the backboard. There's not much to complain about here because if the ball hits the backboard first, you can't block it. It's a goaltend. Now, if you guys haven't noticed, we're not getting stops. That's why this lead isn't shrinking. Again, I get another step up drag screen. I set it up well with the double between the legs. This is what's called a skip or float dribble. This allows TC to get to that short roll. I drop off a nice pocket pass. Now this was called an offensive foul. Let me know in the comments if you agree with this call. But this was a huge call because it gave TC his second foul early in the second quarter. Now we have to play without our best big man for an extended period of time. What do you guys think? Let me know. Now again, I get in the post. There's not much help side defense, so it's really just time to get a bucket. In the post or mid post, I felt like if I was the aggressor in terms of physicality and contact, I was going to be able to get the shot I wanted most times. I was doing a good job scoring, but the lead wasn't shrinking. A few plays later, we run what is called a Spanish action where there's a pick and roll and then me supposed to set a screen on the pick and roll defender. It's a hard hedge, so I pop out, I check the clock, six seconds, make a play, nice pull up against the big man, cash. Now that's six shots in a row. I'm really feeling myself at this point, but again, the lead is not shrinking. Now this next play, Mac does a great job driving the center of the rim. Defense collapse, I get a nice wide open catch and shoot three. You know that one's going in, now seven shots in a row. The next play down, I get a wide pin down from my foreman. The defender goes through, I step back, I leave it just a little short front rim. Let's watch this again. When my defender goes through, I could have stepped back a little bit more and made this look even cleaner. But all right, we go into the half down 13 after probably our worst half of the season. We need a response to start the second half. A couple minutes into the second half, Porto loses me in transition. I get an open corner three, can it to bring us within six. We have all the momentum, the gym is jumping. Ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves a basketball game. Now you've heard the saying, basketball is a game of runs. We just made ours, I'm feeling great. My wife made the four hour drive today, so you know how to shoot her a little wink. 
A few plays later, I get a pick out in transition. I make this curl read because my defender's trailing, make a strong move left, and hit the floater. Now we extend this run all the way to being up three, and then this happens. I feel like I'm in front. They call a crazy foul. He makes the shot. They give him continuation and one, and you can see I'm in disbelief. This is my third foul. I need to go to the bench for the rest of the third quarter. Maybe my hands went down for a second, and that's where they called this foul, but this one hurt. Early into the fourth, my defender, he's a little overextended and over aggressive. I get to my right hand, do a nice job playing off two feet, get the help side in the air, and hit a nice little fadeaway midi. Going against shot blockers is all about being unpredictable and using a lot of fakes. A few plays later, I get the top pick and roll. The big is in too deep of a drop. Do a good job playing off two feet and not over penetrating. Drop off a nice pass to TC, which he finishes. Next play down, I get sort of a wing extended pick and roll. I don't do a great job bringing him to the screen. But he goes underneath, and you know I'm going to shoot that, especially when I'm feeling good. We're now down three with four minutes to go. You can't ask for anything more in a championship game. It's now a matter of each team's players stepping up and who's going to make more plays. This next play hurt because I felt like I played incredible defense, stayed relatively in front of the ball, didn't use my hands, and got called for a foul. Again, you can tell I'm upset, but I want to ask you guys, do you think this is a foul or not? If it is, tell me how. I'm just genuinely trying to get better to see what I could do better the next time I'm in that situation. Now with two minutes to go, I get the switch after this pick and roll. I'm playing one-on-one -on -one against their four-man. I basically call an ISO, do a nice tween cross, maybe over-penetrate, but do an excellent job finishing this, bring us within one point. Now with 45 seconds to go, TC has a free throw to tie the game. He misses it, so what? Max does an incredible job getting the offensive rebound. We have our veteran ex-NBA point guard, Tony Douglas at the top. I trust him to make this play every time. A nice step back, cash, puts us up one with 35 seconds. All right, so here's probably the most controversial play of the game. We do an excellent job defending this first action. Tony stays in front. We all wall up, potentially an over the back there, but they get the offensive rebound, and this is what I'm talking about. He drives left, everybody's straight up, and they call the shooting foul, giving them two shots to take the lead. A sigh of relief for Porto fans and a gasp of disbelief from Benfica fans. This is crazy. We shouldn't have expected anything less from this type of rivalry game. Let's watch this play again one more time in slow motion. I want your guys' honest opinion. Foul or no call? This one is close. I do see the body contact, but I don't know if that's enough to call a foul at this point of the game. We call a timeout to go over our game plan. If Porto makes both free throws or just makes one and misses one, what we're going to do? Charlon Kloof, a 75% free throw shooter to the line, knocks down the first clutch. Now it's a tie ball game. Either way, we're going to have one shot to win this game. Kloof steps to the line again to put Porto up. Kloof é o trem trem também nas bancadas. Calm, cool, collected. Knocks it down. It all comes down to this. Tony Douglas, our veteran PG, top of the key isolation situation. Watch what happens. This was a no call, no kick, no block, out of bounds, Porto basketball. This hurts. They make both free throws, but we end up getting one more shot to tie the game. Skip pass, up fake, three-pointer, just off the mark. That's the ball game. Porto is your cup champions. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The reason we love basketball and I love basketball is because it mirrors life. The ups and downs, the setbacks, the triumphs, and the tribulations. The pain of losing never hurts less, but I know this story, this journey is far from over. This book, this season has a lot more chapters. It's time to regroup, use the pain of this loss to make sure that the ending of this season is how we want it. It's on our terms and we'll be hosting that trophy. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, live atypical and I'll see you guys around.